Greetings from Bethel Memorial Baptist Church. I'm Pastor Brent, and we pray that this service finds you well. We've been planning a number of things and doing our best at this time of social distancing to reach out through emails and other opportunities. Today, we're going to have a, a short worship service together. We'll be singing, we'll be looking at the word, and we'll be just connecting in this unique way. I just wanna cover a few announcements before I open in prayer. I wanna thank the Lord for the deacons that were voted into office earlier this year. They have done a great job at checking in with people that are not necessarily connected electronically with others. And we just love reading their reports and all the things that we're hearing. Also, the people that are helping them. I think we'll have some new deacons to recommend to you when we can get back together for a meeting. We also wanna thank you for your tithes and your offerings that are being mailed in and those that are giving through the website. Uh, the intention right now is to count as we see enough come in and we'll be letting you know how that's doing as we, as we move ahead in the weeks to come. The emails have explained how you can log on and get some Sunday School materials from Lifeway. That's the company we use as a church. And then there's also a CEF after school club that is done through Zoom. They've had a the, the meeting through the end of April, and they will be, uh, uh, you just need to read through the emails and find that call if you need more information about that, if you have children at home that would like to be part of that after school club. This week, we had challenged people to watch the videos on eyewitnessbible.org. If you haven't had a chance to do that, look that, look that website up. There's a lot of different uh, testimony videos, monologues of, of Bible characters that are just very encouraging to watch. And if you have not been getting our email encouragements and would like to, just email the church, info at BethelMemorialBaptist.org. Let us know that you're interested in being on our email list and we'll make sure that we continue to send out these email encouragements as long as we are social distancing. Let's now bow in a word of prayer. Father, I thank you so much for your love. I thank you for your ability to conquer all. I thank you that whatever it is that we're facing, we can trust that you know, you knew it before we would face it, and you are there to guide us through it. We thank you so much for your, your care. We thank you, most of all, for the power of the resurrection, what we celebrate today. Let us walk in that power, no matter what it is that we're facing. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen.
Our scripture reading for this morning is coming from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 1 through 10. Again, Matthew 28, verses 1 through 10. After the Sabbath at dawn, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, his clothes white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, he has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead and is yeah. going ahead for you, of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clapped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. 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 Well, good morning, people of God. I hope you are excited to be alive today on this resurrection morning. Amen. God is good to us and faithful. And even in the midst of the storm, we can give praise and glory to him. So this morning, uh, Troy and I are going to sing, Rejoice, the Lord is King. Amen. Amen. Jesus 
As we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, I hope you recognize his power to help you face every challenge at this time of social distancing. On March 15th, the last time our church sought to meet as a congregation, we discussed the certainty of uncertainty. And we looked at the James chapter four, where it says, be careful how you make your plans. You shouldn't assume that they're gonna happen. You should say if the Lord wills. How appropriate that is at this time. How many of you expected that we'd be spending our March and April the way we are? We also discussed the certainty of God's blessing from our series in 2 Thessalonians. Chapter 2 actually ends with a benediction or a blessing. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father who loved us and gave us eternal comfort and good hope through grace comfort your hearts and establish them in every good work and word. Well, the week before that, we talked about the need to rest before the Lord, and I challenged the congregation to learn the discipline of quietness, to recognize we need to get away from it all sometimes to be quiet. I am not a prophet, nor am I the son of a prophet, but this is certainly a time when we can learn to quiet ourselves through the social distancing. I hope, and I've said this so many times, turn off the news time from time to time. Turn off the notifications. There is so much information that's bombarding us. Find a trusted source, listen when it's appropriate, but then find, find time to feed on things that are important, things of the Word of God, because we know that that is truth. Well, it's Easter Sunday, and I can't think of a better time to remember God's power to overcome. Whatever challenges you are facing now, health concerns. I was gonna sing with them during the hymn, but I could just tell my allergy cough, it's just an allergy cough, was gonna bother me. So I stepped to the side and gave up on that. Our financial worries, some I know are not getting a paycheck. Some have lost that opportunity to work right now. And that's an immediate concern. Others are looking at their savings and wondering where it's all going, their plans for retirement. Wherever your financial worries are, you know that you serve the God who owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Amen. Whether you want cattle or not, he has something for you anyway. Getting simple tasks done. I was talking to someone who doesn't have a washer in their house. They usually go to visit other people and get their laundry done. They're welcome to do that. But at this time, it feels very, very awkward. There are all kinds of things that are hard at this point. But we need to know, maybe it's just a general fear of the unknown. We need to recognize that God does know, and he can be trusted completely. So I pray that this morning we can look at the opportunities to look at four different Bible characters and look at their struggles, and that we can learn that it's not just the power over sin and death that we celebrate, it's God's power over anything that we face. Let me pray. Father, I thank you for this time in your word, and I pray that you will truly bless us as we consider these four characters. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. I want to first look at the character of Peter. Peter failed Jesus greatly. Before Peter denied Jesus, he boldly proclaimed his faithfulness in Mark 14, 26 through 31. And when they had sung a hymn, 
they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, You will all fall away, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though they all fall away, I will not. And Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said emphatically, if I must die with you, I will not deny you. And they all said the same. After making such a bold proclamation, Peter needed to learn a lesson. He was very weak. He did not stand in his own strength or he would fail. And we know from the last two verses of Mark 14, 71 and 72, how adamantly he denied his Savior. But Peter began to invoke a curse upon himself and to swear, I do not know this man of whom you speak. And immediately the rooster crowed a second time. And Peter remembered how Jesus had said to him, before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. Peter failed miserably. It wasn't the first time he had failed. He needed to learn the lesson, but this certainly was the hardest time that he failed his Savior. Now I'd like to consider the Apostle John. He didn't deny Jesus. He didn't even run. But I imagine that he was so close to the cross as he experienced all the things of that day, he must have felt completely powerless. What can I do? I'm just an observer. There's nothing I can do to make a difference. John 13, 21 through 26, talks about when Jesus was telling the disciples someone was going to betray him. And John was very much a part of that. How ironic I get the to read John, and I was reminded that John and Sean means the same. Sean is Irish, John, so I guess that's a good name for me, I don't know. <laughs> in John 13, 21 to 26, it says, After saying these things, Jesus was troubled in his spirit and testified, Truly, truly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he spoke. One of his disciples, whom Jesus loved, was reclining at table at Jesus' side. So Simon Peter motioned to him to ask Jesus whom he was speaking. So that disciple, leaning back against Jesus, said to him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is he to whom I will give this morsel of bread when I have dipped it. So when he had dipped the morsel, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. <clears throat> John knew that Jesus loved him. That's how he referred to himself. He was there resting against Jesus when Jesus was troubled. But he was also there at the cross. John 19, verses 26 through 27, tell us of the conversation Jesus had with John at the cross. Verse 26, when Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, woman, behold, your son. Then he said to the disciple, behold, your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his very home. No matter how much he knew that he was loved by Jesus, no matter how faithful he sought to be, he must have felt powerless. There was nothing he could do but watch what was going on with Jesus in the crucifixion. Now I'd like to consider Mary Magdalene. When I think of her, I think, I imagine how much of a struggle it was to be a woman in the first century, to recognize that they were not treated well, they were not treated with respect, but be assured Jesus always treated women with respect. She was given the honor of being the first person Jesus appeared to, and the, one of the first women that was there to see the stone rolled away. I want to clear up a few things about Mary. She is misunderstood throughout history. There's a lot of reasons for that. Mary is one of many Marys in the New Testament. 
And we know that the day before Palm Sunday, Mary anointed Jesus' feet with perfume. But it wasn't this Mary. It was Mary of Bethany. Earlier in his ministry, another unnamed woman anointed Jesus' feet with ointment. She was a sinner that many presumed to be a prostitute. Jesus forgave and blessed her. But people take these two stories and think that the first one, the, the first one I mentioned was Mary Magdalene, and they confuse it with the other one, and they assume Mary Magdalene was a prostitute. That's not true. And we just need to see, then further, people will look at it and say, maybe Mary was the one that was brought to Jesus to be stoned. That was a whole other person. What do we know about Mary? We learn a little bit about Mary from Luke chapter 8, verses 1 through 3. Soon afterward, he went on through the cities and villages, proclaiming and bringing the good news of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him, and also some women who had been healed of evil spirits and, in, and infirmities. Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out, and Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod's household manager, and Susanna, and many others who provided for them out of their means. So what do we know about Mary Magdalene? She had seven demons. Jesus cast them out, and she became, for whatever means that she had, one of the women that supported Jesus in his public ministry. As I said, she was also the first person to see the stone roll away. And we learn in Luke 24, verses 1 through 11, that experience. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they, while they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you, while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be delivered in the, into the hands of the sinful men and be crucified on the third day rise. And they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all these things to, to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. They did not believe them. Mary was given the honor. She was able to bring the message first that something has happened, and they thought it was an idle tale. It's amazing. You can be sure that Jesus, this is how it happened, because if someone were writing the story, they would not have chosen a woman to be the first person to give testimony. It just wasn't done in that day. Well, Mary is misunderstood. John is powerless, and Peter failed greatly. But this last character is one that I think I relate to the most. Someone who needed to see. I have to tell you, setting this thing up, I'm the person in the room that needed to see it. I want to know how it's going to work before we even attempt it. And sometimes we just have to let go and have faith in what's going on around us. That happened to Thomas. That phrase that I hear, FOMO, the word meaning fear of missing out, Thomas missed out. He missed out because he wasn't there with the disciples when Jesus first met to, with them. But I was curious in John 11, verses 7 through 10, and also verse 16, we learned something about Thomas's character as Jesus was talking to his disciples. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now seeking to stone you, and are you going there again? <clears throat> Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. So Thomas, called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. Thomas may have been a doubter, but the reality is he was willing, at least in his mind, to die with Jesus. Let's go to Judea with him that we may die with him. Thomas was the one who, again, missed out on that first meeting with the disciples and Jesus. And we know that what we know him best at is, is the doubter, the one who said he had to see. John 20, verses 24 through 25. 
explain that. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Four Bible characters from Easter story, each with their own personal struggle, unique struggle. Jesus met each one of them at the point of their need. Peter's need was met because we know Jesus forgives sins. We know that Jesus took time along the Sea of Galilee to give Peter the opportunity to say three times, I love you, Lord. The last time, it says in John 21, 17, Jesus said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he had said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Not only would he forgive Peter, but he still had ministry for him. And he was calling him and making sure that he knew he was completely restored. John, he may have felt powerless as he had to witness things that the other disciples ran away from. But at the end of his gospel, I think he learned the secret of what to do when you feel powerless. John 20, verses 30 through 31 says, Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Believe in what Jesus can do. Don't worry about what you can't do. Mary, the misunderstood one, the one who wasn't believed, Jesus still chose to appear to her first. And we hear that in John 20, verses 11 through 18. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. And as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one of the head and one of the feet. They said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that he had said these things to her. The fourth character we've considered, Thomas. He was the doubter, but we see that Jesus knows our doubts, and he's willing to meet us at the point of our doubt and challenge our faith. John 20, verses 26 through 29, says, Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was also with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. I am so glad that verse is in the Bible. That's speaking about you and I, the opportunity to believe in who Jesus is, even if we have not seen him like the disciples did. I'm glad all of these stories are in the scriptures. And I wonder if this morning you can get, identify with any of those struggles. Do you struggle like Peter with how great your sin is? Jesus has the power to forgive your sin. Do you struggle like John with how little you can do? Remember, it's more important what Jesus is doing. Watch him at work. And if he allows you, join him in that work. Do you struggle like Mary with being misunderstood? You can be sure Jesus understands. 
He has a great plan and a great message for you, no matter who else understands or who else believes you. Do you struggle like Thomas with your faith? Jesus understands your doubts. He will strengthen even the smallest faith if we but turn to him. I hope this message from these four Easter characters has encouraged you. No matter what challenges we face during this time of distancing from each other, no matter what challenges we will face after this season of life is over, we know that Jesus has the power to overcome it all. Let's close our time in prayer. Father, I thank you so much for the truth of your word, for the love of your son and your love to send your son to us. I thank you for the power of the spirit that ministered through Jesus while he walked this earth and the power that rose Jesus from the dead. I pray that we would know your power and that we would rest in that power. Bless us as we sing this great hymn and as we continue to worship you throughout this day. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> The Lord is risen today. that you remain well and that you are blessed through this Easter season and we look forward to the time again when we can gather together as a congregation and now may the God of peace who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus that great shepherd of the sheep equip you with everything good for doing his will and may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen.